largemouth bass start to school, the fishing can be exciting on a variety of baits. Let's join Larry as he utilizes several of his favorite lures in today's lesson, a mixed bag. That is a good bass. Listen to him. Boy, did he ever eat that jig. <laughs> He's got it plumbed to his goozle. I don't even see it. Looky there. Right in a hard place. Man, isn't he pretty? That is a beautiful bass. Oh, he eat that jig too. I ought to be marking that spot, but I'm gonna tag that fish. Some lucky guy may come along and catch this bass and say, I caught a bass that Larry caught. This little Fin Pals tagging system is so neat. I mean, you can just tag them that quick. Let's see here. Zero seven nine nine. Hope somebody has as much fun with you as I did. Grab my tape recorder. This is so easy to do. A zero seven nine nine caught on a Denny Brower Pro Model jig in about fifteen foot of water with a pigtail trailer on uh, October the sixth, nineteen ninety six. Fill out them little old tagging slips when you get home and shoot you right back to fishing. Or oh, one broke. You know, the fall of the year really is a time of year where you have a lot of fish schooling and fish are subject to be on structure. You really, you really just have to get in an area you know bass lives and just fish till you find out what they're doing. Dad, gun, they're breaking all around me. In the fall of the year, bass tend to school up or relate to structure. Try to find an area that you know holds bass and fish thoroughly until you can determine just what the fish are doing on a given day. Teach him to come up schooling. Uh oh, this poor little fish here's got bobos all over his body. Wonder what caused all that. Are you through? No. Look at that. Got a little bit of fungus on him somehow or another. I, n nobody really knows what creates that. I don't think it's from people handling fish. I know it's not. I don't really know what causes that. Well, it looks like my little jig deal. When I'm sitting there bass fishing and they come up schooling all around me, I can't stand it. I'm gonna have to get me out a, a bait like a diamond shad. That's a I mean, when they're really good fish and they're schooling on average size shad, can't beat it. Crazy things. I catch one, there wasn't a fish breaking nowhere. And all of a sudden I catch a big fish on a jig and then the whole world explodes. I've had them do that so many times on Toledo Bend. Look at there. In the fall of the year, in the fall especially, that's when they really like to start chasing them shad. You know, beginning fishermen, you don't have to have a big fancy bass boat to learn how to fish. I learned how to bass fish after I got through wading the, the creeks and walking to the pond out of aluminum boat. There's no big deal. Just go where you know is an area that you're going to fish, launch in that area, and watch out for storms and don't let yourself get caught out there in bad weather. There's nothing wrong with fishing out of a small boat until you get the experience you need to graduate up to that big, nice boat. In the fall of the year, boy, I've seen lots and lots of times these fish would be stacked up like this. Two or three good, pretty days with a high pressure and they come off the bottom 
and you can't catch them unless they break. You're just wasting your time because they're not on the bottom. You get a good little cold front through, and that, that low pressure, these are all little ones, that low pressure puts them back on the bottom. Boy, then for a couple of days, you can massacre them, I mean. But once they come up running shed, usually you don't, usually you don't catch them down deep. Oh, that's a good one, too. I just hope nothing bites my jig. Oh, he's a good one. In fact, he is a... And I've got him with one hook, and he's got that bobo stuff on him. I mean, got that... Golly! You don't normally catch two in one day like that. Man. Disgusting. I'd like to know whether fish can live over that or not. I'm gonna just have to get this jig in, put it up. That's all there is to it. Bad as I want to fish the jig down deep, they're about to drive me nuts. Now I'll lay it down and they won't school for a while. What are you gonna bet? You know, to get maximum distance. I mean, to be able to throw it as far as you can throw it. You want to leave that thing hanging to about a foot from the end of your rod. But just be sure you don't rear back and hook somebody in the back of the head. Where was this one? That feels like a pretty good one, too. That is a pretty good one. This is when I need some help. I need somebody else in here to throw over there because they're still a-going. Keep your head under that water. Come here, I'll go back out there. Get me another one. Well, he ain't ready at all. That is a nice little bass. Are you through? Good bass. I like it when it ties them together and I can get them on two hooks, they can't get away. This Nixon note is brought to you by Bomber, runs true right out of the box, and by Riverside Soft Plastics. You know, one of the greatest ideas that I've seen come along in a long time, Mustad brought it out in treble hooks. The new triple grip hook, hey, that's not a joke. This hook actually does what it's supposed to do. If you'll notice, each one of these trebles is pointed in toward the eye of that lure. I'm going to tell you what, when it makes contact, if you ever get the hook in a fish, when you set it, it buries and he can't hardly ever throw that hook. And not only that, but watch this little trick. When you take the end of your finger and you push down on the point of that hook, if you'll notice that hook didn't kick away from me, it wants to bury. The angle of that point is made perfect so that you get super penetration. This Nixon note is brought to you by Berkeley Triley, America's number one fishing line because it's super strong. You know, stock ponds help a fisherman learn how to read water because it's a small piece of, of, of water that you can look at. I mean, you've got a dam on that end, and it's pretty well straight in line. And you've got kind of a little corner here, and you've got a little corner over there. To me, that resembles a pocket. That's a, that's a, a corner or a pocket. Then up here on this end, 
here on the here on this left hand side you've got a nice man-made point that's real visible and then you've got a cove over there and a cove over there and what that does is once you learn how fish relate to each and every type of shoreline in a pond you can take that directly to a man-made lake and you'll have the same features and you'll be able to spot them and learn how fish relate to them and that's one of the hardest things for people it's not just going out there and casting and catching fish it's reading water and finding fish. And by fishing small bodies of water like this, I'll tell you right now, it'll really help your fishing. bushes and I can't get to them. One of the best things to watch for when they're schooling like this is if you if you see them continuously coming up in one spot then that's the place you want to go and drop your worm or your jig when they when they go down because usually there's something under the water right there a hump or a, maybe an isolated tree or there's something that's different in that particular spot that they like. I found a lot of wormholes on Toledo watching bass school. See an old bird sitting on a tree line? He knows where that little sweet spot is where they feed on them shad consistently. Run him off, go over and idle around, see what's under the water because a lot of times it'll be a, be a break line or a, something that holds them big fish. If you see fish repeatedly schooling in one spot or area, try fishing that spot with a worm or a jig. Chances are there is some underwater feature holding the fish in that area. Come up and break, but I didn't get my bait in there quick enough. Watch this one. Told you. Man, that was such a long cast, I ain't even sure I got him hooked. <laughs> Good jump there, young feller. Oh, hey, he's bigger than I thought he was. I thought he was a little bitty one. But he ain't that little. He's a pretty good little bass. Ouch. Good fish. Good fish. A sack full of them was always pretty. Just gotta keep that thing close to the top. You read a lot about fishing in the early in the morning and throwing top waters for an hour or two and and doing certain things early in the morning and then switching to, to maybe a plastic worm later in the day. That can be very true, but if your fish are deep, even in the early morning time, then you're wasting your time throwing at the shoreline with a topwater bait for an hour or two. That can be the most critical time of the day for sitting up on, a, on the end of a grass bed or a side of a point and throwing a plastic worm. So don't let little tips like that confuse you. If the fish are deep, fish deep. Fish are shallow, fish shallow. Don't try to do both just because somebody tells you to. Yeah, I'm needing something that runs closer to the surface, but under the water. And that little bitty 
three sixteenths ounce pro model. I'm gonna tell you something right now. They ain't a better bait made for catching fish that are chasing little baits, fishing stock ponds, or even schooling bass. As long as they're large mouth, white bass and hybrids don't hit this too good. But large mouths, if they're chasing them little shad, they love it. And you can hold it up near the surface and buzz it, leaving that little wake. When fishing for schooling bass, it is important to get the bait in front of the fish while they're excited and on the surface. Choose a bait that runs just under the surface, such as a small 3 16 ounce spinner bait. Run it just under the surface, creating a wake with the blades. I'm coming! Get it in there! Whoa! You pick a little leap. I got the good one. Well, you don't want to fight, I'll just ski you right on in here. Now watch, look at this. <laughs> well, I knew you wasn't done. Once you get their heads up, just ski them to the house. They're not going nowhere. Isn't that a fat one? Back in the old days, we skied all of them to the boat. I see you down there. Back in the old days, I'd have thrown him in the boat and he wouldn't have got away. But nowadays, days of catch and release, you don't worry about that. Unless you're in a tournament, then you get real bad. Well, folks, I hope you've enjoyed today's lesson. Boy, anytime they're busting on the surface chasing them shad, that makes for a great fishing trip. Come back and see me again next week, and I'll make you a better bass. <laughs>